Hey guys, this is Pastor Scott, and I'm live here from the the One Accord Crusades uh, office, <laughs> which is our room. Let me just uh, do what I always ask you guys to do. Pray and hit the share button. So Lord, I ask that you bless this broadcast, and I'm going to share it to the places that I think that you would have it to go, and that these people, my brothers and sisters, whether they're watching live or later, will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. So hold on one second, and bear with me if I laugh a little bit. Uh, I flipped the camera around. Don't know what it looks like on your end, but it looks like I am squashed. <laughs> so I'm looking at my face on here and it looks like funny. I don't know what it's looking like on your end. Perhaps you can tell me. But I just wanted to share a quick testimony with you. And uh, the scripture the Lord put on my heart today for that, this um, is this. 2 Timothy chapter 7. Or 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 in the King James Version says this. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I mean, I could preach a whole sermon just on those and the, draw out the points that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of the Holy Ghost and also of love and a sound mind, but that's not what we're here today to share. I just wanted to share a testimony. Um, with all that's been going on with the, the as we're calling it now, we don't even want to say it, uh, just the little C, or CV, however you want to say it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not even going to give the devil any more credit than it needs. he needs to have. Um, but uh, we were uh, been in fasting and prayer all week. A lot of um, of the authorities and different churches and such, they have to answer to uh, uh, their uh, leaders and whatnot. And uh, the bigger churches were forced to go uh, live or from their homes or whatever, which is kind of interesting. Um, I've had mixed emotions in regards to that, but it's cool how they're being forced to do it. We've been doing it since about 2013, um, going live to the best of our ability. Um, and now they are having to, whether they like it or not, to reach out to their congregation and people are getting saved around the world, I would imagine, thanks to this. But we um, decided to press forward, me and the team, for the park ministry, because I know that a lot of the brothers and sisters that are in transition on the streets, whether they're living under an overpass or in their cars or hotels and such, um, a lot of the churches and the food banks and things that they would normally get food from is closed down. I mean, the government might help them out if they have applied for uh, food stamps or whatever, but that's also been limited as well um, by the administration in an effort to try and get more people back to work and such. And, and it's put some extra pressure on these brothers and sisters. So we felt led to continue on with the uh, park ministry on Sunday and do our best to adhere to the uh, guidelines of uh, groups of 10 or less um, and then everybody keeping at at least a five or six foot uh, difference. We were just telling them, spread out your arms and then just go twice that far or whatever. And uh, we had service in the park. And we prayed that the authorities would uh, stay off our tail and that the rain would stay up and uh, that people would be blessed. And we just kind of did like a condensed version um, so that we weren't out there like, hey, look at us. Whoa, you know, um, not that it was wrong, but we just wanted to make sure to uh, just a submit and abide by the rules that have been placed forward uh, so safe distance everybody had gloves on and such um, and I just wanted to share with you that five people there was probably about 20 or 30 people at any given time on the the as we call them the steps at La Pont, at at the park and um, they s were sitting like I said around five or six feet apart we asked them and um, there was, like I said, around 20 or 30, and about five of them raised their hand for Jesus during the time for the altar call, which was really awesome. And then people were watching live online as well. And I'd say that we got to feed probably around 30 to 50 people. We had four pizzas that Patrick brought from uh, Costco, a case of water, a couple dozen cookies, and then we had 40 burritos and 30 uh, soft tacos from Del Taco, and we got through all of them. And we were giving it pretty liberally um but yeah i'd say around 30 to 50 people and they were so thankful the brothers and sisters on the streets uh said thank you for not forgetting about us and um having the boldness to come out here and uh, we just did our best we we cleaned everything up we disinfected we used gloves like i said and and we kept the service short so that we got in and got out i think the live broadcast was 38 minutes and then um <clears throat> after that we 
prayed. We did a prayer circle at uh, arm's length again. I mean, it was a big prayer circle with all the people that were left. And we just kept our distance. And we had church uh, in, the, in the park. And people were blessed. They heard the word. Um, and I just wanted to share with you, even though we were, um, I'm not going to lie, um, it was a little bit scary. I mean, we, we have faith and we know that God can heal them and all that stuff. But this, this uh, time that we're in is a lot of uncertainty, you know, and then you have to be careful. Um, the Bible has some prescriptions for that, for in Leviticus and such, for the priests and people that uh, were lepers and what, and uh, to be in quarantine and things of that nature. So we wanted to abide by the rules, but we still wanted to make sure that the people knew that there was someone that cared and that they had some food, knowing that the food uh, is uh, in shortage for them. And then even if they did go to the store, a lot of them can't really uh, get around too well, you know, and uh, to go to the store and to wait in the lines and things of that nature. So I just wanted to encourage you guys, just pray, seek the Lord, and um, there's ways to get creative. If you have a church of 100 people, you do 10 services if you have to, or you, you know, you can use a, an app that uh, people could register for each time and you could still have people, or you could divide the amount of uh, the services, say you had 100 people and you had 10 people and the, the capacity of the church is X amount of square feet. You just divide that by how many people by the six feet and then make sure that everybody sits where it is. There's uh, ways to um, do this responsibly and still be there for the people. And that includes the gloves. And if you feel comfortable wearing a mask, do that. But I just wanted to encourage you guys, um, keep doing and seek the Lord. And if the Lord tells you to stay home, stay home. But if the Lord tells you to go out, go out. And um, try not to bag on other people. They're just doing the best they can to get through this, especially some of the bigger churches that have thousands of people to worry about. Um, like I said, I've been having mixed emotions about this, uh, but it doesn't really matter. God's going to get the glory. And Romans 8.28 says that all things work together for good. So this will work for good. And um, like I was telling my wife the other day, uh, it's interesting how people are being forced to go live and uh, spend more time with their family and then the word's going forth even more. They might be um, not being able to have the churches open, but they are going live. And I saw uh, Instagram the other day um, with uh, Justin Bieber. He was standing and he had his friend, a pastor, and the pastor was where he was at. And Justin Bieber was there with his family and he was watching his phone and the pastor was preaching the word <laughs> right there. And there was like 26,000 people watching Justin Bieber's Instagram. And then the pastor had enough boldness to do an altar call, you know, and the, the comments on the IG were, were mixed. You know, a lot of people were giving thumbs up and hearts and amens and praise God. And then other people were saying, you're a fool, you're an idiot. What are you doing? He didn't care. He was still watching God's word. The pastor was still preaching on Instagram, and it was awesome. So don't get me fired up. But anyway, I love you guys. Stand strong. And like I said, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says this, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And that's it. Power, love, and a sound mind. Just say no to fear and say no to little c. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. If you need anything at all, give us a call at 1-855-70-JESUS. Share that number. That's a nationwide number. It's toll free. And uh, you can reach myself, Joni, or Jeff. Amen. So God bless you guys. Man, there's quite a few of you on here. Um, I hate to leave you. Uh, I, don't, I can't see the comments. So if you're saying anything, like I said, my screen is boop, kind of squashed like this. <laughs> so there's a lot of you on there. So we love you guys. Uh, do what the Lord tells you to do. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Spend time with him. If you're bored, pray. If you're bored, read your Bible. If you're bored, pray. If you're bored, read your Bible. If you're bored, call someone. Minister to them. You can pray for unbelieving friends or you can call them up and say, Hey man, I haven't talked to you for a while. What's going on? Are you right with Jesus? Are you a believer? Let's talk about this. And um, people can reject your words, but prayer can be sent around the world. Amen. So pray, pray, pray. Enjoy. Share. We love you guys. Uh, that's about it. I can't stand looking at this funny face. It's totally like squashed. I hope it isn't on your side. God bless you guys. We love you. Again, if you need anything at all, call 1-855-70-JESUS. 
And if you'd like to know more about the ministry, just go to oneaccordcrusades.com. God bless you.